not just James Bubba Stewart turning a shaky season start into a series domination, but all the riders pushing themselves to a new level. Ridiculously fast lap times, however, and an all but uncatchable rabbit has also taken its toll. Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, California is our final stop on the West Coast and a pivotal event in the 125 West Points race. Stay with us for this, the sixth stop of the THQ 125 AMA Supercross Series. West Division. And hello once again, everybody. Todd Harris along with the champ, David Bailey. I'll tell you what, King James I is threatening to run away with this title. What can the rest of the field do to stop him? Well, they've got to beat him off the start, for one thing. And that was the one weakness that James had at round one. That's what stopped him. He didn't get the start. But ever since, he's been flawless. He's been spectacular. He's just a joy to watch. And in fact, he's such a joy to watch. The 250 guys sometimes stay after their practices to watch and see what James is doing out on the track. Another guy who is extremely fast, Travis Preston, but he doesn't seem to David get a very good start yet. Well, you know, if he can get the start, he's very dangerous. He can run away with it. But, you know, what helps him get to the whoop section so fast is that he's so tall. But the fact that he's tall, he's carrying a little extra weight, and it's killing him off the start. Let's take a look at our Suzuki Series standings. It's James Stewart atop the leaderboard, followed by Travis Preston, and Billy Leninovich sits in third place. We've seen some amazing crashes over the last few weeks in the Western Division. Is it the tracks, or is it the pace that James Stewart is setting? Well, I think it's more the pace right now, and, and Stewart is pushing it so far that these guys are riding on the edge, and when you're riding on the edge, sometimes you pay the price. All right, before we get to our first race, let's throw it down to the one and only Cameron Steele. Well, you think San Diego loves Supercross or what? The El Cajon Zone is right down the street. So many great teams from there, like Ron Lachine, Brock Glover. I mean, tons of names. San Diego is also the spot where James Stewart, the 16-year-old, last year got his first ever win in the 125cc class. These guys know dirt bikes. They know Supercross. I want to know, do they think that James Stewart's going to win? You hear him back here yelling Bubba. You never know what's going to happen in Supercross. The idea is excitement and fun, and I guarantee we're going to have it here in San Diego. All right, thank you very much, Cameron. David, it's now time for the THQ track math. Quite a bit different than last week. Long start into a big sweeping first corner, right through two hoop sections back to back, leads you into a rhythm section onto the first big triple jump. A couple of plateaus, you got to step on, step off before working your way to another long rhythm section. Doubles and triples through there, onto the big triple jump. Cross the starting line and onto the finish. <laughs> 125, heat number one, West Division on the line from Qualcomm Stadium here in beautiful San Diego, California. And we have got a great night for you tonight. Todd Harris, Dave Bailey, and guest commentator Ryan Clark from Team Solitaire Yamaha. Ryan, good to have you aboard, and uh, thanks for taking time to come up here in the booth with us. Your impressions so far, Les, you look at the 125 West Division. Yeah, it's been a pretty competitive series, everything except for that first place position, which has kind of been a walk, but uh, I don't know. I know Preston's uh, amped up to get out there and get another victory since uh, that, that solo victory at the opening round, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of hungry guys out there wanting to get up on the podium, so I think it's going to be a good night of racing. Now, we're just glad that you made it up here in one piece. What happened last week? If you can, if you can manage to look at the video and take, take us through what took place last week. You know what? I'm still trying to figure it out myself, but uh, all I know is I was kind of committed to do that triple, and McCormick, uh, I think he freaked out because Lada was there on the right and moved over a little bit, and uh, contact, he was coming up, I was coming down. It wasn't pretty, but uh, luckily we both walked away, and uh, I got a little upset and kicked the hay bale there, <laughs> but uh, just getting rid of some aggression, so. You had to be happy that you were able to get up and walk away from that, because when you're coming down, I mean, what's going through your mind this is not going to be good yeah definitely i mean i wasn't <laughs> looking forward to the impact but uh like you said you know i walked away and i'm here this weekend it's a new weekend and that's the great thing about racing you know uh we've got what 10 or 11 more rounds here to go so i'm i'm just looking forward to get out there tonight and have a good good race and uh i'm, I'm pumped to be up in the booth with you guys calling ryan clark joining us for this 125 heat number one as we look at the nissan starting grid 20 riders going six laps top nine to the main the rest of the 11 to the lc clue lcq excuse me 
Travis Preston in here. Billy Leninovich or Lanovich, David, which do you prefer? Well, you know, Leninovich is a bit of a tongue twister, so he's just going, you know, everyone butchered it. They call me <laughs> Lanovich, so we're just going to go with that. I just talked to the team manager, uh, Larry Brooks. He said Lanovich, so we're okay. going to go with that for now. So, folks, if you hear us say Lanovich or Leninovich, I don't want to make Grandma Leninovich mad at us. That's the appropriate way, so we'll go back and forth for Billy's sake, but it should be a great one. We'll just call him BLT if we have to. Well, the 30 board is up, and we have got a great evening. A little cool tonight here in San Diego. We're in the Mission Valley at Qualcomm Stadium, but the riders don't seem to mind. The track is beautiful, and you got to love that long starting way to work straight away. As the 30 board goes sideways, there you see Travis Preston ready to ride. He didn't get the jump right away. You can see that. Oh, what a pack going into that corner. And right into your rhythm section, David. Looks like Merton's out in front, number 120. And Pascal Larray, number 902 on the KCM. He's been getting amazing starts. Not bad for Preston either. Number one, sitting right there in third. If he could get one of those in the main event, boy, he'd be happy. Well, he was in third, and Travis Preston just took over second place. So it's Larray and Preston, and this is exactly what Travis Preston needed. Ryan, we talked about this at the top of the show, how Travis has had to battle himself up from ninth, tenth place into second, third. How do you think he's going to do now, sitting second? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, his bike got him out to a good start there, and uh, he's got just uh, Larray up in front of him, and I'm, and I'm sure he's going to try and make quick work of it. But uh, Larray's got a lot of experience coming in. He seems like he's been riding every last chance qualifier up to this point, but he's got a great start going, and he's even gap pressed him a little bit on the first lap, so see what he can do with it. I'm sure he's pumped to be out front. Yeah, Smart that's a that's a good point, Ryan, because you know we see Pascal so many times and riding all the races, and he's gotten the most practice, but he's still not able to really hold that gap over Preston through the whoop section. That's where Preston will be really strong tonight. Yeah, he really struggled through that. Look at the gap now coming down. It looked like for a second there he was going to check out. And Travis Preston, number one, right on the heels of 902. That is Pascal Luray of France on the KTM. Behind him, though, number one, the defending 125 West champion, Travis Preston at Hesperia, California, on board the Amcel Honda, Chaparral Honda. Travis made a little mistake the last time through that straightaway and lost a lot of time. That's what helped Luray pull away a little bit. But you see Preston's quite a bit faster. He's able to reel him right back in. Still, I mean, Pascal. First time over here, I think Villeman had a little bit to do with bringing him over and helping him get some sponsors and get a, a And look here's at the, the critical USA. section. Travis making his run one more time, and this time he makes it stick. Yeah, I think Preston was just waiting for the whoop section to come around again, biding his time. He knows it's a, you know, a six-lap race and uh, no pressure to win, but obviously he wants to get out front and just make quick work of it. Well, David, you talked about it at the top of the show. He's bigger, so it's somewhat of a disadvantage on the 125, but in the whoops, he's got to love it. Well, he's got to you know, take his strength, which is getting through the whoop section. Here we're going to look at it again, the pass to the lead. He comes in with so much more speed and with such a long body, he can allow that bike to just bounce up and down underneath him and not be affected too much. But he's carrying a little bit extra weight, and usually in the main event, he's having to work his way up. And when a guy like Stewart is in the race, you can't afford to give him any time. Meanwhile, back in the pack, Danny Smith turned the fastest lap of 54.21. So we'll keep an eye on Smith. But right now, it is all Travis Preston. And this is great, gentlemen, Ryan and David. I'll put it both of you. This is great for him to get this kind of start in a heat race. But it's really going to matter when another racer's in there named James Stewart. Yeah, and you can see right there down in the yellow, Danny Smith making his move into second place through the whoop section. So Pascal is getting a little bit of a lesson now and had to go fast through the whoop section. He makes another mistake. But it ruins your rhythm a little bit when a couple guys get by you like that. Yeah, sometimes for a rider like Pascal, it's uh, it's almost better not to get the whole shot because there's that added pressure, and, right. you know, he didn't really get to watch those guys the first lap, and he was just maybe a little bit tentative coming into whoops, and uh, it shows when a, you know, a more experienced rider like Preston discharges him, and uh, he's a little bit apprehensive, and it, it just, you know, towards the end of the whoops, you're going to lose your rhythm, and, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Travis Preston showing why he has had the fastest track practice times out there. He is absolutely annihilating this course. This is the 125, heat number one west. Race one, we start with 20 riders, six laps, top nine going to the mate. And now Travis Preston turning the fastest lap with a 52.4. David, this is pretty much what you expected all week. I think he's been a, a pot just boiling over with not getting good starts. Well, if you take a look at Hanson right here, number 93, trying to work his way into the podium. And 
sort of announce himself as, hey, I'm a new kid on the block, and I'm pretty fast, too. He hasn't got the starts and been able to really show that. But going back to Preston, I'm really impressed with his poise and the way he's handled some of the blocking and the weird stuff that was going on between he and Sorby at Anaheim and then and then uh, what happened in San Francisco. And he's just pretty much kept quiet and just riding as hard as he can. Josh Hansen making a good move through the whoops there on Merton. But, uh, you know, Preston is really impressed with the way he's handled himself. He's, he's acting like a champion, and he deserves to get a good start and really make a race of it with Stewart. White flag lap here, the 125, heat number one, West Division. Preston continues to be your leader. Travis Preston took him about one lap to reel in Pascal Luray of France, and he has done just that. Now he's just starting to survey the course and find out what he's going to do in the main event. Yeah, Travis looks really smooth tonight. I think uh, I think he's poised to give Preston a little bit of a run for his money. Uh, I'm sure all the fans here would like to see it. So uh, hopefully he can get a good start like he did in the heat and, and make a go of it. Yeah, you know, everybody sort of gravitates to James Stewart, but Preston in all the practices has been very quick. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Travis. Definitely stepping it up over the last couple of years. He was kind of stagnant there, but uh, I mean, he's really, really showing what he's got and, and just, you know, doing what he needs to do to, to put himself in the winning position. So Travis Preston picks up the victory in heat number one. He is followed by Smith, Hanson, Mertens, and BLT Billy Leninovich in the top five. So a great race to start things off here at Qualcomm Stadium. So, Ryan, your thoughts. Uh, it's a different view for you. I know practice, you're down on the track getting a look at it, but uh, from watching it with this perch, watching it through monitor replays and all that, what do you think of this track? What do you think of the 125 class? Well, the track's beautiful tonight. I really like the layout, the way it kind of switches back a little bit. They changed it up. Uh, there's two really good whoop sections, which are going to make for some good passing, and uh, I, I, honestly, I can't wait to get out there myself and, and, and show what I got. So. All right, folks, it's Ryan Clark. You'll see him in the 250 show on board that beautiful Yamaha number 37. And remember, he'll be carrying our visor cam. Ryan, thanks for being with us. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, good luck. When we come back to San Diego, California and Qualcomm Stadium, we'll have official results, interview with our winner and our Thor profile right here on ESPN. And welcome back to San Diego, California, stop number six. Well, we just witnessed heat number one in the 125 West Division, and it was Travis Preston winning, followed by Smith, Hansen, Mertens, and Leninovich rounding out your top five. Right now, let's send it down to the track and Cameron Steele. Motor number one winner has the number one on his bike, Travis Preston. Champ, I guess that's how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, um, but I, I'd like to try to win main events. This is just a heat race, so this is just gate pick. All right, you're talking about the main event. We've seen you have a problem beating James Stewart the last couple weeks. It's the start. You haven't been having great starts. We talked about it earlier. What's the key here? The key is you just really got to be committed. I'm kind of being a little girl coming into the turn, letting off, afraid I'm going to crash. I'm just going wide open. Right on. He's holding it wide. We'll see how it works for the main event. Travis Preston has one heat win for the night, but he wants the main event win. Folks, well, some of you guys might remember this little kid back in the Disturbing the Peace freestyle motocross video that couldn't even work on his motorcycle. Well, Matt Walker has certainly grown up. He's the number 30 on the Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Walker, was that true you couldn't work on your bike? Uh, back in the day, I didn't. I think I could, but it was one of those things you might as well, you know, let them do it. But I, uh, now I'm a little bit better. I could be mistaken, but I think Ricky Carmichael was doing the tune. And any chance of him working on your bike nowadays? Man, I'll have that dude cleaning my truck if I wanted to. <laughs> You know? Dude, that's what I like. You gotta, anybody at home, you don't know Matt Walker. The guy's fun. I'll tell you the truth, he's a little hard-headed. I mean, he walks around here kind of with a little bit of a scowl on his face, but that's only because you really want to win, right? You won last year. Yeah, well, last year I won, but, I mean, it, it's tough. I mean, I ride for the best team out there, and uh, they put a lot of pressure on me to win, you know. And I don't know. Uh, during the week, I'm a good guy. I mean, I'm a humble guy, and then when I get to the race on the weekend, and, you know, it's all business. Um, I, uh, You're not I, afraid to flex. I'm not afraid to flex or, uh, you know, whatever it takes, you know, to go off. But uh, all in all, I'm a humble guy, and, I, and I'm just here to um, do my job and win races. You know, there's some guys that get sick. Like, I, I see some of these guys, do people overtrain sometimes in the sport? I know it's not a factor for you. You're just yeah. buff and cut and ready to go at all times. Was that a factor in racing? Um, I think a lot of people take it a little bit too serious. We're not training for marathons. We're not training to be a professional cyclist. We're training to be motocross racers. So I don't see how you could overtrain by riding every day, you know, eating right and living right. You know, it all falls in, you know, the hands of God. And you know, I'm sure it all work out if you... Uh, 
just live a good life. I think a lot of people take things a little bit too serious, and uh, that's why they overtrain or they get burnt out or you know whatever they call it. Well, he's definitely not burnt out. He's not overtrained. But I'll tell you one thing: if you come to a corner at the same time as the 30 bike, get on the brake because this boy will put you down if you have to. Heat number two of the 125 West Division. There you see the leader right now, James Stewart. And for all intents and purposes, David, he has just dominated. I, I think he should, he's royalty in this, so we call him King James I because James Stewart has put on an absolute show. Matt Walker has had flashes of brilliance. We saw him put on a great show down in Anaheim. Another guy that could possibly thread him. But, uh, David, I think the whole point, as you talked about this, is it all comes down to the start. Well, you know, with Stewart... I don't know if it's that big of a deal because he's so confident and he's able to come through the pack so well. It's not as important to him, but for everybody else in the field to try to beat James, they're, they're trying so hard to get over the gate. A lot of them blow it in the first 10 feet. He puts that kind of pressure, and he's lined up right next to Matt Walker. A moment ago, we saw a flash there of uh, Tyler Evans on board the ECC Suzuki and his mechanic, Kiwi, down from New Zealand as we go on board with... Tyler, who'll be carrying our camera, he's done a great job over the last few weeks. We really appreciate the work he does out there, and I have a feeling if we turned him loose, we could really, we could do something special. Anyways, we take a look at our THQ West Heat 2 starting lineups. There you see James Stewart, followed by Andrew Short. Matt Walker's in this group as well. And the 30 board is sideways. We are ready to race here in San Diego. Oh, Hamblin, beautiful move around the outside. Hamblin, Tiger Lacey was up there. James Stewart back in the pack right now, sitting about fifth. Tyler Evans is getting up there as well. Now, these guys have checked out a little bit. There was a big cluster of riders that messed up in the whoop section and kind of held up the progress. And Stewart was part of that. It was Tyler only able to double the big triple. Stewart just ahead of him, getting out of that corner. Tyler doing a couple, stuffing a couple of riders right there. They're not going to like it, but by the time the end of the race, they won't even remember what happened there. That's what you've got to do in the early part of the race. Get in there and bang a little bit and try to pick up as many spots while everyone's still cold. Well, he picked up the whole shot. He continues to lead here in heat number two. This is Sean Hamblin, number 33 on the Suzuki RM125. Team Sobe Suzuki out of Sun City, California. His technician, Alan Turlecki. And here is James Stewart starting to make his run. He's already up into third position. There's the leaders. Hamblin coming the other way. And he's going to get some pressure here because Stewart is gaining pretty fast on these guys. Sorby trying to work his way up. Looking at Hamblin out front. He just flew with the Blue Angels this week. Got to go out to... Oh, he, he loses the lead. Unbelievable. And look at the heat that's coming on from behind. 259 is just starting to find a spot. Oh, and King James set to crown another victim as he just waits a little longer. Now, David, this is something that maybe last year we wouldn't have seen. Patient. James would have pushed the issue, and this year he's just waiting to find his spot. Yeah, and this might be his spot right here. Watch out fast. Jeez. Just blew oh. by Hamblin right there, and it blows by short. Oh, my goodness sakes. You know, what, what really makes James special is that might be the fastest he's gone through the woods all weekend. And <laughs> the, the chances you have to take to go into a section faster than you ever have before, not really positive about the outcome, and then pull it off. And that's how this kid builds confidence so well, fast. He's willing to do whatever it takes. Watch him just comes into those loops so much faster than Hamlin, and Hamlin went through there pretty well himself, and then blasts the corner and just blitzes the top of those right there, pitches it back over to the right to set himself up for the corner, and he's already got a gap over Sean Hamlin. With just three laps to go, this is 125, heat number two. Remember, we started with 20 riders, six laps, top nine to the main, the other 11 to the LCQ, not to take it any way from Bubba, but he blew past Andrew Short, number 41, and Andrew had some mechanical problems because he had to shut down, and he's pulled off the track, so we'll have to see what happened with Andrew, but he is done. Andrew is off to a great start this year, running third in the points. And a couple of podiums at Anaheim. Too bad to see him having problems. Tyler Evans, Working our helmet camera up through the field, over the big triple, clears at that time. 
Just ahead of him, he's got Matt Walker and then Eric Sorby. Tyler Evans, one of those kids also, he, he's not small. I mean, he's a big kid, goes about 190, 6'1". So he really manhandles, similar to Travis Preston, only throws around that 125. Hey, you can see Sorby just landing, we're coming into the corner. Walker behind him, and you can see Tyler into the picture. Sorby getting a little stylish off the finish line jump. For the triple before the finish line jump. And then here they come into the whoop. Eric Sorby riding the Kawasaki KX125 Team Pro Circuit. Now Sorby is riding, I believe, with a broken foot. A couple of broken bones in there. He's got it all wrapped up tight. And uh, it, it, he's in pain, but when you're out there, you got to do what you got to do. And the, the adrenaline and the focus that it takes to ride this track takes your mind off of the pain. It hurts more when you make a big mistake out there, jump a little too far, too short and in between the races. But as long as they're staying warm on the track, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Eric Sorby, a very talented rider and involved in that incident a few weeks back with Travis Preston, but we can't take anything away from him, David. You pointed out he's a great rider. Right behind him is Matt Walker, currently sitting in fourth place. Matt Walker, another kid with tremendous upside, a load of talent. Now, you look at Walker coming by, running a 52-second lap. Stewart, we're looking at right now in his final lap, a 50. Point oh. one. <laughs> Two seconds faster than what Preston was doing in the first qualifier. So it's just amazing. Whatever everyone does, it, it's pretty good. James comes out and tops it. Well, but I'll tell you one thing you can't top, Doc. What's that? Sean Hamlin got to go out to El Centro and get in an F-18, $40 million plane, and do a 45-minute moto up in the sky at Mach 1. That must have been a real thrill. I did that last year, by the way. I'll just tell you about it a little later on. And, and by the way, the bag was empty when I was done. Anyways, James Stewart comes around, takes the checkered flag, making it look easy. Stewart picks up yet another heat win, this time in heat number two. And he advances to the main event. I think that the tale was really told as the rest of the riders come through. Finally, Hamblin comes through and Sorby. You can see the gap that Stewart had on, but the way he handled that whoop section, it was amazing, David. Well, it, he's fast through the whoops, but what I saw him do to go for the lead was just, uh, I think he went in there a little faster than he has all week. This is his final lap coming up to the triple, a little tribute to Jeremy McGrath, the knack-knack. Oh, he does those things pretty good, too. <laughs> Jeremy's even scratching his head going, wow. When we return to San Diego's Qualcomm Stadium, we'll have official results and a winner interview, as well as Suzuki's on track. Stay with us. We'll be back to San Diego right after this. And welcome back to San Diego, California. Stop number six of the 125 West Region Supercross Series. And what a great heat it was here in heat number two of the 125s as James Bubba Stewart picks up yet another victory, followed by Sean Hamlin, Eric Sorby, and Matt Walker. Right now, let's send it down to Cameron Steele. All right, James, here's the deal. You're not allowed to blitz past the guys so fast in the whoops. What is the secret to the whoops? I mean, incredible speed you're carrying. Yeah, you know, my Kawasaki is working good through the whoops out there. You know, I'm just trying to go out there and have fun. And, uh, you know, the whoops like, seems like my specialty tonight. You know, I'm going to use it to my advantage. You had to work for it just a little bit. You didn't get the whole shot, but a good start. Travis Preston said he needs the whole shot to battle with you, or he needs a good start. He hasn't been getting them. You think if you guys, I mean, you both won your heat race. You think if you guys come out of the gate together, there's going to be a race? I don't know. Uh, you know, if I get a good start, I'm around my own race, and uh, hopefully I can just run away like I have. And, uh, you know, I, I think if he gets a good start, uh, it'd be a race for, you know, three, two, three laps, but hopefully, you know, I pull away from there. James, unbelievable job. We'll see you in the main. Thanks, Cameron. Right now it's time for our Honda flashback. San Diego was the second stop on the 2002 schedule, and the 16-year-old James Bubba Stewart would get a decent start in the main and eventually finish in first, becoming the youngest rider ever to win a Supercross main. It's now time for our Suzuki on track segment and Jamie Little. Heading into the 125 East Coast Series, there really isn't a favorite. But there are a few riders that could take home the championship. And those same few riders may have a jump on the competition because they've been racing the 250 on the West Coast. Michael Byrne has had impressive results in the 250 class on the West. His best finish was fourth in the last Anaheim, where he held off Ricky Carmichael for the first part of the race. Now, last weekend was really good for me. Uh, I felt good all weekend. And, uh, I was you know, fast in practice, and 
I was uh, just consistent, and uh, I got a great start in the final, and and just tried to forget about everybody else and just try and think I was at the test track just doing a moto, and uh, you know it, it was it was working for me, and I uh, got out front and uh, rode uh, some solid laps, and you know Ricky and those guys caught up to me about lap nine or ten, so uh, I was happy with that, and uh, um, you know David got me right at the end. So I was close to getting on the podium, but you know I was happy with the four. Uh, it's good to be out there with those guys and getting in some good training and stuff for the 125 East. Brock Sellards has had an up and down season on the 250, but a seventh place finish at the final stop in Anaheim gave him the confidence to win in the 125 class. Ivan Tedesco qualified for the first five main events on the 250. His best finish was ninth in Phoenix. We can expect good results from him on the 125. Yeah, 250s worked out pretty good. Uh, I just really went out there to get some experience. I might be riding 250s next year, and uh, it helps riding against guys like Carmichael and Reed and stuff. And then once I go over the East Coast, it might be a little easier. Take this opportunity to join us in person for the THQ World Supercross GP in the AMA Supercross Series. Upcoming dates include February 22nd, Atlanta, Georgia. March 1st, Indianapolis, Indiana, and the RCA Dome. And March 22nd, in St. Louis, Missouri. For more information, log on to www.sxgp.com. When we return to San Diego, California, it's the main event. And welcome back to San Diego, California's Qualcomm Stadium. It's now time for the McGrath Moment. The Supercross season opener is always highly anticipated by rider and fan alike. In 1994, Jeremy McGrath battled with Larry Ward, and it set the tone for the entire season. Taking the corner, and here's the challenge for Jeremy McGrath. Oh, you see him look over at you. Uh, what are you doing up here, Ward? Larry Ward had the lead. Ward number 11, and that's number 8. Henry, Henry makes the inside move on Ward. McGrath now is third, what a battle. And it's McGrath taking the inside on Henry on the whoops. Third, Larry Ward, but here comes Jeremy. Jeremy, right next to Ward. Gets him on the block inside. In fact, he's established himself as the champion. He takes the checkers. Jeremy McGrath. Well, Jerry, you know, I was going, going in the race, I was pretty dang nervous, you know, I, I have to admit, I'm, I think it's just going to get easier from here on out. It's now time to check out the Nissan qualifying highlights from the 125 LCQ. That long straightaway came into a factor for a lot of riders, but not for that man. Andrew Short got the whole shot and never looked back. Quite a bit of Dyson going on behind him, though, as Andrew took the checkered flag and was in the main event. A few extra laps on the track never hurt. So Andrew Short is your winner, followed by Troy Adams, Eduardo Rojas, Logan Darian, and David Esposotti finishing in fifth. Those are your Nissan qualifying results. The 125 main is on the line here in San Diego, California's Qualcomm Stadium. A very difficult track, a very trying track, and I had the chance firsthand to check it out. David, you weren't available to coach me, so I grabbed my buddy Cameron Steele and take a look at this. If you want to be the host of Supercross, you're going to have to prove that you can ride a dirt bike. Todd Harris down here on the course with us. Uh, it's a Supercross track, Todd. Are you ready to tackle this thing? Can you ride a dirt bike? That's what I want to know. The answer is yes, I can ride a dirt bike, but uh, I think a lot of people at home don't realize how big this track is, how big the jumps are, the doubles, so I'm going to go out there, but uh, you know, you've been around the sport a long time. Give me a little advice. What should I shouldn't do? Well, what you shouldn't do is ding up Tyler Evans' bike. He was nice enough to loan it to us. The other right. thing is, Supercross tracks are filled with steep takeoffs and landings, so you want to take it easy, okay. just have fun, and don't do anything crazy. Okay, I'll try to, man. I don't, right. I don't want to embarrass myself or you, so we'll see what I'm happens. A, I'm a little scared for him. Oh, man, we'll bad. See how it goes. He's trying to start the bike now. Lots of pressure. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Dude, I had no idea you could ride like that. Dude, that was sick. I couldn't believe how big that kicker was. I got hung up a little bit on that knack, but uh, I got to be honest, Bailey's been working with me a little bit. 
Damn, you've been holding out on us or what? <laughs> what not do you think? bad, not bad, not you bad. Know, I've I, seen you doing football, basketball, world's strongest woman. <laughs> I didn't know you had those kind of skills, but nice job making me look good. I'm no David Bailey, but I'll tell you what, calling these races can be a lot harder than doing this. As we take a look at the Honda main event starting grid here in San Diego, California, James Stewart is there, as is the defending 125 West champion, Travis Preston, Sean Hamlin. Eric Sorby's another name, Matt Walker, Andrew Short, Shane Bess, a very talented young rider that's in this field, Tiger Lacey, Pascal Array, David Pingree, and the list goes on and on. Last year, 125 main event, James Stewart picked up the victory, Ivan Tedesco got third, David Pingree was fourth, and Travis Preston got fifth. So a little bit of history right there, and I think all of America would like to see that. I know all the 60,000 plus people here at Qualcomm Stadium would like to see James Stewart and Travis Preston go out, check out from the rest of the field, David, and have a little one-on-one -on -one battle, see what happens. As the 30 board is up, that's 30 seconds, gives the riders a chance to do some final adjustments. Yeah, they wait till the last second and get the goggles on, get ready, get focused. When that goes sideways, they have a minimum of five seconds before the gate goes down. Plenty of time to put it in gear, take a deep breath, and focus on the gate. The sign is sideways. Well, we'll keep an eye on the SXGP.com hole shot, and we are underway in San Diego. This is the 125 main event. And Stewart's buried in the pack. He's right next to Preston. Well, here comes Stewart on the outside. Don't hey. jinx him. Scratch that. Oh, my Stewart goodness. in the lead. Unbelievable. Crack out the fine dining, folks. James Stewart is coming to dinner. And you know the amazing thing about this is that Preston went under the corner side by side, couldn't get through the pack quite like James. James blitzed the loop the same way he did in the heat, and he's gone. Well, the SXGP.com hole shot goes to 221 Tiger Lacey, but it only lasted for a few moments, and then James Stewart took over. Now you can see right behind him in the blue and yellow, still got blue angels on the brain. Sean Hamill, number 33, really do for a, a breakthrough ride like this to get up and finish on the podium, stay with Stewart, maybe keep this race a little closer than the past four have been. So it goes Stewart, Hamblin, Adams, Smith, and Lacey, your top five. Preston right now sitting back in sixth place. We'll see if the Travis Preston move-up show begins in earnest on this first green lap as they're going through. And here it comes. He's starting to go past Tiger Lacey. Well, that moves him up into fifth. But he's got the entire straightaway that he's on right now, including this big triple, before he can see Stewart. You see Stewart just a briefly going the other way in that shot. Hamlin is staying pretty close to him, but not close enough to, to really do anything about it, but close enough to maybe establish a good position that he might be able to hold on to all this whole 15 laps and land on the podium. And James Stewart is a very smart rider as well, folks. He is not going to check out and just take some casual laps. He knows how fast Travis Preston has been in, tra in practice. And look at he just flashes through that whoop section. Rider down. So James will have to split on just a little bit. Blows right past him. And now that becomes more of an obstacle for the rest of the riders. Yeah, messed up Hamlin's timing. Yeah, another rider down. That's 72, and he's causing all kinds of problems for the rest of the pack. So Troy Adams, who we saw later in the qualifying, having his problems completely turned around on the track. He's just trying to find some way to get that thing turned around. Fortunately for him, the bike is still running. Let's look at a replay this one more time, Watch David. the right of your screen. The front wheel goes down in one, starts losing his balance, hits a tough block, and just flips over back. You know, that right there should not have been a crash. He's going to look at that tape later on and be like, what was I... I could have saved that. Now you got a great battle of Danny Smith and Preston. Preston has been able to cut through this pack, no problem, at San Francisco before he collected with the finish line scaffolding and that he and Walker getting together. But he should be able to get by right here, and he does. Got the inside. So Travis Preston goes from sixth to third in a matter of a lap and a half. But as David pointed out, he's well over 100 yards back of James Stewart. You watch this, comes out of the corner, gets a good run, and he's on the inside for the next corner. So all he really needed to do was get close, and he'd be able to get in there and make that pass stick. He's got to get up to Hamblin next. Hamblin having a great ride, but look at the lead. 
We'll step aside from San Diego, California, but when we come back, more of the 125 Main here on ESPN. 30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Welcome back to San Diego's Qualcomm Stadium in the Mission Valley. The 125 Main is in progress. Narita, Walker, and Sorby now all battling for that fifth, sixth, seventh position. Matt Walker trying to get in there, move himself up in the point standings, but before too long, David, we're going to see some lap riders. And the bad news for the rest of the pack, James Stewart is wearing the Lucky Fox helmet. We've documented this before. He's never lost wearing this helmet, folks, and unfortunately we saw him drop it, making a victory lap in Anaheim, so we've made a suggestion for the Brinks truck to pick it up before and after every race so it doesn't get out of his sight, but uh, this kid is just on fire. Well, a lot of these guys have said, look at Sorby can't do the triple either. He looks over, loses the position to Andrew Short, who had to run the last chance qualifier to make it to the main. Good to see him back in form. Now, a lot of these guys drop their helmets on purpose. They'll get Troy Lee, or, you know, the, the famous helmet painter, do a beautiful job on the helmet, and they drop it in the parking lot, just uh, thinking, well, let's, why don't I drop it without my head in it first? Narita staying underneath Sorby right there. Look at Stewart. I mean, just watch this kid. This next section, he was able to do something earlier today where he went wide right there and tripled this, and then tripled, tripled, tripled all the way down the straightaway. He doesn't need to do it now, but this kid is having a blast. He doesn't look to me like he's riding as hard as he can right now. His lead is so big, I think he's just having some fun out there. His lead is big indeed. Double digits, 14 seconds as we are on lap 9 of 15. As we look at the Honda stopwatch, and there you see the time differential between first place, James Stewart, 259, and second place, number one, Travis Preston, the 125 West Division defending champion. And uh, Shane Bess is going to be, unfortunately, get the dubious distinction of being the first rider to get lapped as Stewart is coming up on 102. The very talented young Suzuki ECC rider Shane Best right now in James Stewart's crosshairs as Travis Preston just starts his way down the long straightaway and Stewart's already on the other side of the track. Yeah, you know, as we watch Preston, he's aggressive, he's charging, he's doing a great job, but really where the, the race fell apart for him was in the first corner in the first loop section. And you think that with a, a little better start than he's been getting in two loop sections right off the bat, back to back, and he'd have been able to move through the pack maybe not quite as good as Stewart did because Stewart would have a little bit more in the clear but at least be closer to him and you know he had his chance kind of blew it there and he'll never see Stewart now Walker and Short battling for fifth and fifth and sixth excuse me right now here at Qualcomm Stadium 125 main event when we return to San Diego and stop number six of the 125 Western Region, we'll have the final lap of the 125. Welcome back to San Diego. The 125 main event is in its final laps, and to no one's surprise, James Stewart is your leader by a near mile. Short schedule the time of 53.6 on his last lap. But I agree with what you said about Matt Walker. It says, uh, we saw flashes of just sheer brilliance in San Francisco. He looked very sharp, looked very fast, like he might turn something loose at Anaheim 3. And see there, he just cut that corner a little too sharp. He's so busy trying to get to back to the left of that straightaway, which really opens the door for Short to come down the, the right side of that section and block passing. Short comes out there a little faster this time. And he closes the deal. Well, some nights, some nights Todd, you just, yep. you know, things aren't clicking. You just right. got to do the best you can. Oh, here he comes right back. Walker's doing, you know, it's nothing really that fancy, but he's aggressive and he's still fighting. It, it may not be all coming together for him like it has in weeks past, but, you know, this is one kid that doesn't give up. He can take a hit. I see him go down and lay there doubled over, and you're thinking, well, that's it for him for the night. And he gets back up and keeps going fast. Well, folks, by the way, our leader, James Stewart, 259, he has a 15-second lead over second place, which is the defending 125 West champion, Travis Preston. Smith, Hamblin, and Walker round out the top five short in sixth, Sorby in seventh, 
and Billy Leninovich in eighth right now. So you hear a lot of talented names out there, and they are nowhere near that man, James Stewart, who is your leader. Interesting comment he made. He said when he's out there riding, David, he doesn't listen to the engine. He listens to the crowd. Look at short. Working his way up on Walker right here. Walker blew the first couple of whoops right there and then just ruined his momentum. But he was able to fight back. Now Stewart just lapped number 93, uh, Josh Hansen, who had some problems. He had some stuff stuck in the rear wheel for a little while, so he had a, a tough first lap. But still, Josh Hansen sitting in 10th place. And there's the Tyler next, Evans. The next rider for Stewart to lap, put a lap down, would be Billy Lanovich in eighth place. This kid has lapped over half the field. And he's still got a few laps to go. Well, he's just so fast with two laps to go. You look at, you know, he passed Tyler Evans. And Tyler Evans is a pretty strong rider. I know his bike's really fast because I had a chance to ride it yesterday. So it's just a lot of great talent out here. James Stewart is just that good. Don't want to take anything away from the rest of these guys because they are all great riders in their own right. James Stewart right now just seems to be that much better as we go on board. Tyler Evans, ECC Suzuki, number 64. The 22-year-old out of Salinas, California, four-year pro. Looking very good out there. Unfortunately, James Stewart is on the track as well. Yeah, look how he's going wide right here. That's where Stewart was tripling over that one. Then he tripled all those and then all these into the corner. Three hops to get over all those jumps down that straightaway. It was something that in the practice sessions yesterday and this afternoon, the 250s weren't even doing. Eric Sorby and Billy Leninovich, the KTM and the Kawasaki's doing battle right now. And this is some good racing right here. Both these young men, extremely talented. Billy Leninovich has had his problems with injuries. Good to see him back up and riding. Eric Thorby's had his other kind of problems, but uh, needless to say, this is great racing. Lanovich it didn't look like he was too happy and kind of went out and hit the front wheel and looked back at Thorby like maybe they had already come together before. And they're fighting with each other and slowing the pace down a little bit. Well, 259, James Stewart Jr. doing the victory lap with a lap still to go as he throws a whip out for the crowd, waving everyone out here. James Stewart picking up his first victory, as Cameron mentioned, and this will be his fifth straight win. Phoenix, Anaheim, San Francisco, Anaheim, and now San Diego, California, your winner, James Stewart Jr. picking up the victory in the 125 main. He's got that trick down almost as good as you have. Unbelievable. He's been going to the David Bailey School of MX, I think. Now he's been going to the Tony Haynes, the kid that he dedicated this race to last year when he won it. That's who was running number 259, the number that James decides to keep because he respects Tony Haynes' his right. talent and his advice, and his mom and dad keep him in line as well. Danny Smith, love this guy. He's good sport. He's had a tough time, but gets a podium. James Stewart coming over to shake the fans' hands and uh, just don't drop the helmet this time. Does the kid do everything right? Unbelievable. You know, last week he dedicated his victory to the crew of the Space Shuttle Columbia, which was such a class act. And then he's out here signing autographs. I mean, pick up the helmet, James. We'll take a break from San Diego, California's Qualcomm Stadium. When we come back, we'll have final results and we'll talk with our winner after this. watercraft and scooters. Welcome back to San Diego, California, stop number six for the 125 Western region. As we are at Qualcomm Stadium, the 125 main just concluded. James Stewart Jr. is your winner, followed by Travis Preston, Smith, Short, Walker, and Hamlet. Right now, let's send it down to the track and Cameron Steele. Well, he won his first race here in San Diego last year. He's continuing a streak five races in a row as we go to the East Coast, James. I must say, you look so confident out there. What is the secret, other than just being James Stewart? Well, you know, Cameron, I had a you know a good start out there. You know, you know, I got around those guys through the whoop section the first, and that's been like it's been the strongest part of my day so far. You know, you know, I just got out and ran out front, and uh, you know, it wasn't the biggest lead in the world, but uh, you know, won. 
Well, just for fun, I'm sure some of the fans are thinking about it. We're headed to the East Coast. Any chance of seeing you on a 250 this year? No, nah, we're going to work about it next year. You know, Kawasaki wants me to stay off of it. And, um, you know, I really like to ride it. You know, I, ri I ride it when I'm at home. And, uh, you know, not this year, but maybe an outdoor race or something. Uh, we'll see. We'll definitely see James Stewart, your champion, here tonight, you guys. What a phenomenal race this guy had, but it's five races in a row. Stunning. Unbelievable. All right, thank you, Cameron. As we take a look at our Suzuki Series standings, James Stewart is threatening to run away with this thing. Unbelievable performance by the young man. He's only 17 years of age out of Florida. Let's send it back down to Cameron. Well, this is a couple second place in the row for Travis Preston. Travis, we talked before the race. You said you needed the start. You didn't have it tonight. I didn't have it, but it was pretty good for me. You know, like top six, seven. So that's good for me. But to beat Bubba, I mean, he's always, you know, like top three, and he makes passes quick. And I got to give it to Bubba. The guy really hangs it out. And I'm out there riding conservative. And I don't know. I, I just need to be stupid and just pin it. Lies, you're not riding conservative. You look great on the track. The weight differential in the starts, is that what it is? I mean, you're obviously a much bigger rider. We've talked about it this year. Is, is that what you think the key is? Yeah, um, that, that sounds like a pretty good excuse, so I think I'm just going to go with the weight issue. <laughs> right on, Travis Preston. Not stoked in second, but keeping the points within reach, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's working at it, guys. All right, thank you very much, Cameron. And if you get a chance to join us live and in person, certainly take that opportunity because it is a show you will not want to miss. Upcoming dates include Minneapolis, Minnesota, Atlanta, Georgia, and Indianapolis, Indiana. So on behalf of my colleagues, Jamie Little and Cameron Steele, and the champ, David Bailey, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from San Diego's Qualcomm Stadium. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.